Hey everyone, post-production Camille coming on with a little disclaimer before our episode begins. We originally had planned for audio clips to be played the songs we featured today, but due to copyright issues with YouTube, it had to be cut. So please scan this QR code, which links you to a Spotify playlist of all the mentioned songs in the episode. Um, and thanks for understanding and enjoy the episode. Hi everyone, welcome to OSTEO, that's with a capital T-E-A, where Osteo warriors and treatment and recent survivors spill all the tea on all things osteosarcoma and cancer from the adolescent young adult patient perspective. Listen in on our honest and personal conversations about our osteo experiences, stories, and who knows what else. We tend to get off track sometimes. This podcast discusses all aspects of the young adult cancer experience in a conversational format. Audience discretion is advised. Like and follow MIB agents on social media for all the hot gossip in town. Our monthly newsletter, Connective Issue, just went out this past week. It's a monthly roundup of all things osteosarcoma, including recently published articles and papers, new clinical trials, job postings, funding opportunities, and spotlights on members of our community. If you aren't already receiving it, you can sign up on our website, www.mibagents.org, and you can also find all past issues of it on our website in the blog section. I love the pun, connective issue, connective tissue, I get it. I, I see what you guys did there. <laughs> um, another fantastic MIB opportunity, honestly, I think even though I'm not a gamer, it is one of our best programs is our Gamer Agents program. Lead Gamer Agents are trained to game with warriors in active treatment, as well as survivors and siblings. We have gamers on all platforms, Switch, Wii U, I don't know, we got everything. PlayStation 5, I don't know, whatever you got going, Minecraft, PC, Fortnite. Minecraft, Roblox, I don't know, whatever the kids are doing <laughs> these days. I'm I'm almost 25, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, gaming is more than just having fun, Bear. Very true. It provides a safe atmosphere for children to be themselves and adults. Why is it just children? Children and adults to be themselves while interacting with their peers. Osteo warriors, survivors, as well as siblings and family members of warriors and angels are invited to game with us. So please, uh, you know, reach out to the gamer agents on our website. And if you have any favorite games, I'm sure that there's a group of people who would love to play with you and build that community. For sure, for sure. Well, welcome back, everyone. We are so excited for our episode today. I have literally been waiting for this episode for months to happen. I know because we've had we've had our scheduling issues. We just we we've been wanting to do this one for a really long time. So super important to me. I love music. We're talking about music. We're talking. We're talking about <laughs> that. If you couldn't tell by the title. Without any further ado, I think we might as well dive into our first and favorite segment. What's oh, yeah. Literally. Mia, what are you drinking today? Um, well, first first of all, I'd like to say that this is a mug from the collection that we have in our kitchen um, and matches our plates and platters, which I think is very cool. And they're all handmade, which I think is really, really nice. Uh, I, we supported a small business. So I, for that alone, I think it's a 10 out of 10. Um, and I am currently drinking my favorite beverage. It is the most adult beverage on the market, water. Um, I am drinking water today because, uh, there's construction in our house and this mug was already upstairs and I didn't want to go downstairs where they were jackhammering to make myself tea. So this is just, this is, this is just pre-tea, if you will. Um, yeah. Cause tea, cause tea is just water with, with leaves, you know? So, good temperature. It's a little cooler than room temperature. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a solid nine out of ten. Nice. No, Mia literally texted me this morning. She was like, "I just woke up to jackhammering in my in my house," and I was like, "What is going on?" They they were supposed to start uh, three days from now, and I was asleep, so I didn't get the memo that they were coming uh, at eight a.m. and. <laughs> That's how it be sometimes. Oh, so Cam, what are you drinking? I honestly am so excited to be able to announce that I can drink kombucha again. Hell yeah. 
That's what I'm talking. We love we love kombucha. I love kombucha, and I was so sad. And um, the reason I couldn't drink it when I was on chemo wasn't because of like the live bacteria. Mm-hmm. It was because of the small alcohol content, actually. Really? Uh, yeah. I, like, I know some are stronger in, in alcohol content than others, but still, I'm really surprised by that. I know. And my oncologist like looked at me and she was like, when she told me that I couldn't um, have the kombucha, she was really serious about it. Um, but now I'm off chemo, so I can have my kombucha. It is the Synergy Watermelon Wonder kombucha. Sounds good. And let me just give her a little... You know, I can tell you what I'll be drinking later, which I know it makes it sound like I'm going out. I'm not. Um, my mom and I are getting her COVID and flu shots. Love it. Um, wow. And so I will be drinking a yummy, delicious juice shot. That is the worst thing I've ever tasted in my entire life. From Erewhon, the LA exclusive uh, supermarket. Here he is. That is the Let me get this thing like ever. $20 a shot. Uh, close thirteen fifty. Um, this is not a product placement for Erewhon. I just personally love it. Anyway, um, they're called Germ Warfare, and they are like super immunity boosting, and it has like the grossest stuff ever. But when I had mono, I had one every single day, and instead of feeling gross for two months, I felt gross for a week and a half. So you're good. Okay, I was just gonna say that I have them for our shots. So nice. anyway. Why don't we get into our little tunes that we have queued up? And I hope you all will appreciate them. To start it off, I think it's important to say for the longest time, the cancer community, and not even not even the cancer community, more just like society in general, who mm-hmm. has tried to push songs like Fight Song and like Roar and um brave like as the cancer anthems but for especially adolescent and young adult population that is just not what is going to help you maybe for younger cancer patients those songs can be uplifting and inspiring but sometimes we just want to listen to our sad girl songs i i completely agree and this is no hate to sarah borellis incredibly talented i love to do sarah borellis song in here that is uh, more yeah, cool. exactly. So she 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 definitely has some great music. We love her. Katie um, Perry. Stan. Yeah. Um, but Fight Song and Brave, I believe, are both Sarah Barella songs. And uh, Fight Song is Rachel Platten, I believe. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Wow. I'm really just we love Rachel Platten too. This is no hate to any artist. This is love for all of them. Um, but yeah, I I literally dislike Fight Song so much now because it's been played so much for me, unironically that one of my best friends wrote the lyrics in my birthday card. <laughs> as like a joke? As a joke. Fully as oh a joke. Because she knows how much I it just it drives us crazy. You know, it's like we're 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 allowed to feel our emotions. We don't always have to feel brave. We don't always have to want to roar, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> and it for me, um most of these so brave fight song and roar all came out in like 2013 which was when i was going through treatment at age mm-hmm. 10, like my map id treatment yeah um, and when we were stuck in traffic those like three songs would be stuck on repeat oh for sure like multiple times throughout the car ride home and even my 10 year old self was like i do not like the vibes of these songs like again peace and love to the artists but it's just not for everyone and I feel like our songs um, that we've um, collected today are more here to validate the feelings that can kind of go un- unsaid and untalked about um, when facing cancer. So I, I co her. Yeah. So I guess um, we can go to our next slide. And we yeah. just wanted to provide a trigger, trigger warning. Um, so the songs and lyrics discussed in this episode may bring up some strong emotions like sadness, fear, anger, shame, and grief. Um, And although music is a great coping skill and tool to validate these feelings, music can sometimes strengthen these emotions that may already be intense, no matter if you're in treatment, out of treatment, a survivor, facing a relapse, um, mourning the loss of someone. 
if you're a parent watching this yes. yeah. for sure um and we care about you guys so much we care about the safe general being of all of you and if you're not in the right mindset to watch or listen today please take care of yourselves and we'll be here whenever you're ready and you can feel free to watch a previous episode or we um have some great episodes in the works coming out soon so oh, yeah we're here for you we are you can't get rid of us um yeah so i'm i'm really excited to get this started and yeah let's just let's just dive into it so i know camille this is one of oh. your favorites i have sent mia this song like <laughs> screenshots of the lyrics like several times like oh my god doesn't this just scream osteosarcoma so much and um so this so is does. um the modern leper which is um my favorite version is a cover by julian baker but it's originally performed by um the frightened rabbit i highly recommend you um watch on youtube because we have the lyrics displayed on the screen it's such poignant lyrics i mean the just just off the page immediately i mean you know we we've got cutting off limbs yeah relying on limbs and and illness and death and those are those are the obvious ones but what would you say are like the deeper meanings of it to you yeah so i think something that's like super important to know when interpreting the song is the definition of masochist mm-hmm. which for me i did have to look up <laughs> um but like the definition of masochist which is something important to understand is someone it's someone who derives pleasure from seeing others suffer and I think in so many ways, the disease of osteosarcoma is a textbook definition of a masochist. Totally it toxic relationship. It wants to see you suffer. And I mean, that's how it feels like for me. Um, like you you can peek through the corner of the other side to a life without osteosarcoma and cancer, but then boom, it comes right back at you. Mm-hmm. And it is just the definition of a masochist and i think the other lyric this is how we do things now this is how the modern stays scared i think that speaks to the new normal of having cancer like fear is the norm and that is the intensity of the fear i think julian does an amazing job though speaking of which my julian baker prayer candle shout out (laughs) Um, fantastic etsy.com um we love etsy no promo um but i think her her voice just just does this song such justice and totally um i highly recommend giving this song a full listen and listening to the last verse um she repeats the is that you in front of me coming back or even more um verse and the way she sings it is in such desperation and I just listen to that when I'm really in my feels and I'm like, is that really you coming back for even more osteosarcoma? No, like literally. Um, the the lyrics that really stood out to me the most, you know, obviously I listen to all of these songs fully. Um, and the ones that w- we have a playlist uh, that we created at the end that we'll share with you guys. Um, but you know, when I when I first listened to this one, it's it, her voice is almost haunting, mm-hmm. um, and it's so beautiful and it's it's amazing. But the lyrics that really leapt out to me: so, "I am ill, but I'm not dead, and I don't know which of those I prefer." Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of us who have been so sick, or in so much pain, or just mentally unwell, and it seems like is it worth continuing to live with this disease to continue you know fighting Mm -hmm. um or if you just want you know um, like just to like enter the void you know i'm not i'm not talking about like just like if, if you could just instantaneously you know what i mean um yeah and i think that also brings up like also like the mental health side of yeah cancer and medical trauma and sometimes yeah like sometimes i think i'd be better off dead and not suffering yeah and i don't know which one i would prefer um and i think that is especially a part of cancer that is goes unsaid and goes untalked yeah. about but 
just so everyone knows those are feelings that come up for a lot of us and um if you're feeling those feelings there are resources i highly recommend therapy um Mm -hmm. talking with your doctor obviously we we can't make medical recommendations but yeah we're not professionals and um seeing what um, resources you can get connected with i think is really vital totally completely um really great song choice cam this is beautiful and definitely was an immediate add to my life songs <laughs> yes love julian baker all of her songs <laughs> amazing anything boy genius anything boy genius. <laughs> all right so moving on this is i actually almost got a tattoo of the name of this song many of you are probably familiar with it as billy eilish is you know one of the biggest you know pop stars i guess she's not really pop but everyone calls her a pop star mm-hmm. um And this is the title song from her album, Happier Than Ever. Um, It's about her toxic relationship with her ex-boyfriend and the pain and the grief that she went through with that relationship and how she's still grieving. And I feel like with this song, so many people can't relate to me anymore, that me and my friends who are my age, because... They don't understand me grieving my past self. They don't understand the pain that I've been through, the fears that I have, you know, no matter how much you can explain, you know, and obviously my friends are incredible. Um, My support system is incredible. My girlfriend's incredible. But, you know, it's very hard to relate to having cancer and being like, oh, are you in remission? And then you got to be like, no. And then it's like, we be paired. Yeah. And, you know, obviously I would never treat myself as poorly as this cancer has. And you made me hate this city specifically. Um, I love LA. I have lived in LA for 20 years and it is my home. I think it's a great food city. Just I love living here. But there's one exit that on the one freeway exit that we always get off of. Um, to go to either of the UCLA hospitals. They're about 15 minutes down the road from each other on the same major boulevard um, or close to it. And to this day, every time I get off on that exit, which is frequently because it gets you to multiple neighborhoods um, and cool areas, uh, I get nauseated and I get anxious, even though it, even if I'm not going for any medical procedure and I'm just, you know, going to one of my favorite sushi places that just happens to be off of that road. Um, it, it made me hate that exit and I, I avoided it for years. Yeah. Um, and obviously, unfortunately, I do talk shit about the cancer on the internet, uh, a la this podcast. <laughs> um, but I feel like there's a lot of people don't want to see these ultra negative posts from us. I feel like there's like they like it's a downer to them even though it's a release for us and so you know never told anyone anything bad and it, it's embarrassing that you know sometimes you feel embarrassing that you're struggling mentally or you're physically struggling your disability is driving you crazy <laughs> you know the cancer is driving you nuts it's it's and it becomes your everything yeah um obviously it's depressing uh and I also think the don't waste the time I don't have is very osteosarcoma coded. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because I, I'm someone who, who is chemo resistant and I did two and a half years of chemo. And this is no fault of my oncologist. He was just doing, you know, whatever we thought was best for me. And obviously you don't know until you try. But I did do two and a half years of chemo, different chemos, immunotherapies. And unfortunately for the mutation I have, didn't work. Um, so it felt like wasting time and making me miserable um, with time that I don't have because I don't know how long I have to live. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, that I could talk about every time that you showed up on time. Every time I've tried to get back in school, the cancer has come back. Like I, it, and it's been at different months of the year. Like it's just every time I start school again, something pops up, yes. and so never shows up on time. Um, Truly really a masochist. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, again, a total masochist. Uh, the cancer is 
an abusive partner, um, an abusive parasite within you, if you will. Um, never paid any mind to my mother or friends. So I shut them all out for you because I was a kid against, again, osteosarcoma, pediatric cancer. Um, it impacts everyone around you. You can sometimes close yourself off when you're feeling so drained and in pain and, and alone and, you know, grieving. Um, and it really impacts those surrounding you. And, you know, you kind of just, it, yeah, you, it, it ruins everything good. I, I was talking to Jesse last night and I was saying, I really miss being able to dance without like feeling like I'm going to fall or I'm going to get bumped by somebody and then I'm going to have to get airlifted to the hospital to fix my leg. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> huh. Yeah. And misunderstood, you know, and cancer really makes all of my moments its own, you know, uh, like Billy says, and yeah, you just wanted to leave you alone. Really? Yeah. Your thoughts? I mean, I think the lyric that most stood out to me, which you spoke to, was you made me hate the city. And I think there's two circumstances. Um, one was I enrolled in a clinical trial in New York City mm -hmm. when I was 12, had a grade four um, reaction to this clinical trial drug, oh, um, had a code called Blue Called. And um, I remember, I, I mean, I was off the trial um, after that reaction. And I remember on the way home, my mom was like, oh, like, do you want to stop in Times Square? Like, we've never been to, I've never been to New York before this. And I was like, no, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. And as a lover of musicals, I avoided New York City like the plague. I the would too. But I finally, with with a lot of trauma therapy work, um, went and saw my first Broadway show in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> and I went in March um, as a little pre-chemo post-relapse um adventure it's a funny girl um and i hope to go back and um another thing um yeah I'm gonna get there i'm gonna get there um another thing is um similar to you mia is that um my college is so like there's like one intersection if you go left it's towards the hospital mm -hmm. and if you go the other way it's right down Boston University, all of campus. And mm -hmm. every single time we go to the hospital, I can see the dorm room window that I lived in when I was at school. And so yeah, it's, yeah. it's heartbreaking beyond words, driving to the hospital and seeing um, everything I'm missing out on. Yeah. Uh, and the life that I can't, you know, lead right now. Um, yeah. But everything you said i 100 percent agree with um and thanks billy for the song i know it wasn't about cancer but um i think this really speaks to the experience it is it's it's all it's nearly every single line of of the last verse i mean it's truly um and and the chorus of the song which we didn't list just because of space um is uh when i'm away from you i'm happier than ever and i feel like that's so true about the cancer is that when you have these these periods because i know i'm chronic i know that my osteosarcoma may never go away um but you know i just had two ablations um they went really well um and my interventional radiologist said we're just going to go pet scan by pet scan so every three to four months, you know, you you have like three to four months off in between PET scans and then we'll act. Yeah. Um, and so during those periods, that's that's when I'm happier than ever. And the closer the closer I get to the next pet, the next I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. And you know, I I don't waste the time I don't have. Is <laughs> it essentially yeah all right let's let's move along all right our next song is another boy genius song i love boy genius this is a band comprised of julian baker who we talked about earlier phoebe bridgers and lucy dacus what a trio mm -hmm. and i was lucky enough to actually meet them in june that made me so happy seeing all of your yeah. thoughts about that um and when i met them i made it a point to tell them how much the lyric, once I took your medication to know what it's like, 
and now I have to act like I can't read your mind means to the cancer community. Mm-hmm. And they're like, wow. Like they were like, we never could have guessed. But yeah, truly, like when I think it just I just it speaks to the understanding that cancer patients have for each other. Mm-hmm. And we can we literally know what we're th- what each other are thinking at any given point in time. Yeah. Um and I ask you how you're doing and I let you lie. I feel like sometimes yes. is very e- it's very easy to lie to people that don't understand what's going on, that don't have cancer, because you don't want to burden them. You don't want to be like, I'm scared that I'm dying right now, actually. <laughs> like, things actually aren't okay. Like, I ask. That's the beauty of having cancer patient friends. You know, that's, that's one of my favorite things about MIP is it's brought so many of us together that who else in the world understands? Yeah. It, it, at least a little bit more than the average person oh, what you're going through. If you tell me you're getting methotrexate or doxorubicin or cisplatin and I, I'm going to get that sensation in my body and I'm going to say, girl, I know exactly the feeling. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're going through. And I I can I can read your mind. Mm-hmm. I know what you're going through. Yeah. Um and I think the gut punching this this whole verse is just a punch in the stomach. Oh, 100%. Um <laughs> but we don't have to talk about it. Yeah. I can walk you home and practice method acting. I'll pretend being with you doesn't feel like drowning. I feel like sometimes other people might think or I feel like a burden a lot of the times Mm -hmm. i do too and i feel like um when i'm with them they feel like it's drowning because i'm so much or too much for them to handle Mm -hmm. um and i think it's it's hard to get deep with those type of people and yeah um they they say oh it's you you seem like you're doing so good you're so you're doing so good but underneath it all you're really not yeah and i think us osteo patients and cancer patients know we know it's not true that we're we're not doing good and we're struggling yeah. and we're grieving and we're going through medical trauma and we're going through the unknowns. So yeah. I just it, it's a, it's a lot. It's it's so heavy and it's so it's so it almost feels miraculous when you are listening to music. You know, you may just be listening to a new album that's dropped or whatever, and suddenly you hear these lyrics that you connect to with those deep emotions and that does that doesn't just happen with us you know that happens with anyone with any song you know there are a lot of songs that make me feel seen and heard that aren't related to the cancer absolutely but when it's something that's so connected to those raw almost fight or flight fear grief you know all of all of those negative strong emotions then it's just that much more of a gut punch like you said that much more of um i guess an an impact on you and you feel more seen and heard even if it's not their intention when when i need a song and i I just think it's so beautiful um yeah really great choice cam yeah and again i think i just recommend everyone at the end we'll give a qr code to listen to all the songs you recommend but really giving these a full listen and giving sitting just taking some time for yourself and listening to all these songs and just the magic of music feeling validated by music i think it can be more therapeutic than we assume absolutely all right so this is a little bit of a sillier one because it's a very upbeat song but yeah you know, i've had osteosarcoma for five years i think when this song came out it was closer to two and so that hit me even harder. You know, it's like two years and just like that, my head still takes me back. And so it's like, the, Camille, I know you feel this constantly being told that it's back, that, you know, it's somewhere new, that things are growing, that the treatment you're on isn't working. It takes you right back to the most fearful point. Absolutely. Um, and you know, you think it's done, but I guess it's never really over. Multiple, like I, I, I've been told, only truthfully once that I was in remission and we believed it. Um, and it was a very fun seven months of me thinking 
<laughs> said I was in remission. Um, and then they were like, just kidding. We know you're going back to school, but we're tracking things in your lungs now. So then I had one quarter of school where I was just like knowing that it was my last quarter of yeah. school because the se- they were like, it might not be anything. I knew, I knew. They were like, it's we always say so that. I was like, I, I know it's cancer. Like, don't try to get my hopes up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then it's just, the I think the repetition of it too really drives the point. I mean, it's just like, like scratch the line. We were such a mess, but wasn't it the best? It's not. It's not the best. Um, thought it was done, but I guess it's never really over. Just because it's over doesn't mean it's really over. And I think, it, like, she's just saying over so many times. Yeah. <laughs> but it's getting over the cancer. And it's, you know, like getting, it, and it. it's not just getting over one trauma. It's multiple traumas in one. Um, package deal. <laughs> total package deal. It is It is a smorgasbord, a full charcuterie of traumas. Um, yeah. And so I, I just, yeah. I mean, Camille, I bet you can speak on this even more than, than I can, even though I, I was the one who picked this one. But yeah, I mean, we've talked about this song before on the podcast, I think, too. Yeah. Um, and I think the lyric that stands out to me and is, and if I think it over, maybe you'll be coming over again. I'll mm-hmm. have to get over you all over again. And I think I'm at the point where I I I know it's going to be coming over again. Mm-hmm. And I don't really think there is a getting over you again. And I think for some people, absolutely, there is a, a moving past this and getting over it. Yeah. Uh, I guess maybe that's like kind of the new normal type of yeah. vocabulary um, and adjusting to that. But for chronic patients like Nia and I, mm-hmm. I think it's we never get over it. We're constantly in it. And, and you're constantly it. wondering when it's going to be back again. Yeah, it's not really getting over. It's more yeah. of like, okay, when's it coming back? And when do I have to fight again? And yeah. it's, it's again, ma- like like a masochistic, toxic ex. Oof. Absolutely. It's, it's just, that's, that, that's, that's the overarching theme, if yeah. you all haven't picked up on that by now, uh, no matter what the genre is. Um, yeah, and I think so another point um, I want to say is two years and just like that, my head still takes me back. There are traumas from when I was 10 that I am still yeah. not over. And there is, there is a lot of like shame and like that was 10 years, almost 11 mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. Why do I still think about that? Why mm-hmm. does that still impact who I am today? Why does that still impair my functioning? Yeah. And I think we have to have some self-compassion for ourselves. Like, yes, cancer is the most unimaginable trauma anyone can ever experience like no wonder you are still having this reaction and i i think especially for folks like in my case that are still in it because it still is relevant in in every sense of every single way yeah Um, so i just love this song even though i think it sad girl music can can be upbeat and yeah, and can still have deeper meaning, even if it's not like the most devastating, like yeah, gut wrenching like song ever. Like these lyrics, yeah, really impact me and I. I yeah, think, at least another another song that's like that, but has no relevance to the cancer, or maybe it does. I just haven't listened to it in years. Um, was uh one of David Guetta Guetta? I don't know. One of his songs, I call it the happiest sad song ever. It is just like this total early 2010s like dance pop and it's called Without You. And it's like, basically, I don't know what I'm going to do without you. And it's like this, like, it's like, it's like total party song. And when you stop and listen to the lyrics, you're like, what? Um. <laughs> so that's that's a stupid example, but this is... <laughs> This is a good one. All right. Next on the list. Sarah Bareilles, Queen. She made a comeback after Brave. She made a comeback. This song, I do have this actually tattooed on me. was my first tattoo I ever got. Um, That is amazing. I did not know that. um, I got it under... I got it on the side that I had a thoracotomy on um, when I was in the hospital. I um, actually played this song and sang this song 
with the music therapist there and we recorded it posted it on instagram and sarah brellis sent me flowers so That's incredible i can't believe you never told me that story oh my god it was the craziest thing ever but um this song has a lot of meaning to me and i guess just god i feel like you have more celebrity interactions than i do in <laughs> live in la so i feel like this one is um you know re- the, the reliance on hope and if you can hear me don't go i feel like this is less of a sad girl song and more of a like a hopeful song yeah um and i think in so many scenarios especially recently in the past few years as like my cancer has progressed i do not feel hope yeah. <laughs> i do not feel hope we feel hopeless uh, helpless and hopeless a lot of the time yes um but i think um the lyric, I know you're there. I know there are treatments in research, and I know that there's a lot of progress being made. Um, if we were in the 60s, 70s, would there be a lot of hope? Probably not. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to, you know, recognize where we are in society. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, even in a hopeless situation, there can still be hope. And there are still things that maybe aren't necessarily a cure, but are things that can provide hope and comfort, yeah. like your friends, your family, um, hobbies you enjoy, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and yeah, go ahead. I feel like I feel like hope is is such a I don't even know how to say it, such a common word when it comes to discussing cancer, and it's obviously just a four letter word but there's so much weight behind it um positive and negative you know it's you know we're hoping for good scan results we're hoping the procedure goes well and when you hear that word so many times it just starts to look like a four letter word like gibberish yeah you know when you stare at a word for a long period of time it just looks like that and it starts to feel that way when you hear your doctors say that we hope that this happens or we hope and, and your friends and your family, I, I hope you feel better. And we don't feel it. You know, after a while, and it, like you were saying earlier, we, we, we don't feel it sometimes. And, you know, the throw me a rope, it's like, pull me out, pull, pull me out on you and desperate. Give me some sort of positive feeling um really beautiful really really hard-hitting yes thank you sarah Rose. and i will say i am a sarah Rose stan not all of her songs are like brave she actually has some really good meaningful mm. uplifting there the musical waitress incredible oh of course waitress she used to be mine could have so put this on so put that song on this list but we just didn't have time for it but yeah Yes, which yeah. was incredible and to your hope. Um, there's a lot of good songs that she has, so. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, this is a song that just came out recently. Um, my mom and I both watched the music video. That was the first time we heard the song together. And both of us started crying. <laughs> oh, I am sure. Um, because she feels it in her own way. And I feel it in my own way. And we can see each other for who we are and how the other person could feel with this song. And so that was part of the emotions. But this one has really hit me hard. I am a massive Miley Cyrus stan. She is incredible. Hannah Montana was my favorite show growing up. I just, I was front row at the Bangers tour. Like, I love Miley. I adore her i think her lyricism is incredible i think i just i just sorry i i could talk about miley forever <laughs> please go watch the music video if you haven't seen it it is one of the gut-wrenching most gut-wrenching minimalistic music video it's just her and knowing that her mom was the one behind the camera makes it so much more oh i didn't know that <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. And the the 
Mickey Mouse on the shirt and the there's so much about it. Please watch the video if you were just listening on Spotify. Um, Miley Cyrus is used to be young. Um, so let's dive into the lyrics. Um, th- I, I don't trust the same. I, you know, our weight fluctuates so much as cancer patients. Um, and I, I totally opt for comfort rather than discomfort. I was the queen of low-cut crop tops and short shorts and you know, like heels and all this stuff. And I love, I used to love dancing and, and doing all this stuff and going out and having fun with my friends, you know, doing stupid teenage stuff and, you know, my first year of college and, and all of that. And I don't dress the same. And going back to school for that one quarter after I was declared in remission, which I never was, <laughs> uh, I could feel the difference. The stairs were suddenly, you know, the stairs in the house were not just something I, you know, would run up every day anymore. And I wouldn't dress in a similar fashion to my sorority sisters who were going out. And I didn't want to wear because I was insecure, you know, the crop tops, the short shorts, suddenly I have this big scar on my leg and also makes shaving my legs really hard, which not that body hair should be an issue to people, but you know, we are, we, we live in a society. Um, <laughs> and some people suck. Um, but yeah, and me and who you say I was yesterday have gone our separate ways. I, I, I feel like pre-cancer and post-cancer. I mean, I, I call it BC and AC before cancer, after cancer. Um, and I am, com- I'm a c- completely different person. Um, I may have some similar features, but my body is completely different. Um, The way I look at the world is completely different Um, for all the positives and negatives. There's a lot more fear in me, a lot more anxiety, a lot more depression. Um, But there's a lot of things that I took for granted when when I was young as well. You know, I I, you know left my living fast somewhere in the past because that's for chasing cars. Obviously, I can't run anymore, so there's no chasing cars for me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Valor in particular. (laughs) Yeah, that gets too hard. Um, No, uh, but just left my living fast somewhere in the past because I had to. Um, Yeah, no other option. Yeah, it was just you know there's no more dancing on elevated surfaces and front basements. You know what I mean? There's no you know, let me feel the wind in my hair, you know, as, as we've run towards the water at the beach, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's so many things that I, that I miss. It's like, it's like, I can't even imagine what we used to do a lot was go swimming in like Washington on warm days. And, uh, the idea of getting out onto that dock and having to physically push myself up because that was the only way to get back up. There was no ladder. Um, I tried doing it once, uh, AC, <laughs> and it was really difficult and embarrassing because it took three people to get me out of the water. And I'm a strong swimmer, so it's not like I was like I was holding on, like I was fine. But it was just like embarrassing that like two employees and my friend who I was with had to like hoist me out of the water like a like some injured seal. Like it was just bad. Um, but yeah, and and just the main chorus of i know i used to be crazy i know i used to be fun you say i used to be wild i say i used to be young you tell me time has done changed me that's fine i've had a good run i know i used to be crazy that's because i used to be young miley and cyrus I-, I feel like i'm at church right now <laughs> we're just <laughs> keeping our lyricism up. oh my god this- and i know that 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 hers is because you know being a child star she felt like she couldn't be her true self as much and then she became her true self and then you know you know went too crazy for some people and she got a lot of negative press but she was just being herself and rebelling and being young and now people are like miley's different miley's well yeah she's been through it and she's not the same anymore when you've gone through you know she had the trauma of the loss of her marriage the trauma of her house burning down in the big malibu fires a few years ago um it can, it can it feels like it leeches some of that wild crazy fun out of you and you know i was barely an adult when i was diagnosed you were still a kid when you were diagnosed and so i just feel like you know 
time has changed me and I've had a good run. You know, I, I have so many pleasant memories and I still keep making them, which is great. But you never know when that run's going to end. Yep. And yeah, I used to be crazy. I used to be that girl that always wanted to go out with her friends. And, you know, I was the one to be like, let me jump in the water in my clothes and, you know, like just live in life as a teenager. And I lost that so quickly. And I feel like so many of that have lost it so quickly. And it's so hard to regain that and you're grieving the person you used to be. She is grieving the person she used to be. And I feel like that's something that as cancer patients, we all can relate to. Yeah. And I feel like for me, I've had to, I've had like seven different versions of me that I've had to grieve. Yeah. Like there was the version of me that was that competitive Irish dancer that I had to grieve. There was the version of me that was the star and leading star in musicals that I I can't I can't sing anymore the way I used to or um, dance and have stamina that I you know that was like my new identity that was um, that I I can't I can't do that anymore and now it's the grieving like yeah like I don't really think I can go back to school and finish and yeah. like live to have a career so that's like what yeah. I'm grieving and I had a good run I mean I had a good run and I think. For me, it, it goes two ways. Yes, I did have a good run. And also, are you serious? That was all that I had. Yeah. Like so much anger. Like mm -hmm. and like set like feeling this kind of impending like spiral down like a corner into like a doom space. That's yeah. kind of how it feels. Um I completely agree. It's, it's crazy to grieve like all the past versions of yourself that you were like oh, this is me now, it's a new normal. But it's like, nope, actually. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Yeah. And uh, there's there's just so many phases of everything. It's, it's just, it's just, this is a song about what was. Yep. And how you miss what was, but at the same time, you know, you, you've you've gained more insight. You've, you've learned, you've wisened up, if you will. Um, but I, I, I know I can never be, you know, it, it hurts because, um, I was talking about it with Jesse last night. I had, you know, a little, a, a mini breakdown essentially. And it's like, I miss, I miss being that girl because you would have, if you love me now, you would have loved that girl just as much, if not, but like, I felt like she would love that girl more because Jesse loves to dance. She loves spon spontaneity. And unfortunately, the cancer, you know, limits that a lot. My disabilities limit that a lot. And she's so understanding and incredible about it. And she comforted me so much and was like, I love you. I love exactly how you are. You know, never feel like you're you're letting me down because I felt like I was. And so, yeah, you just got to find those people who understand you and that, yeah, you might have used to be a different person, but at your core, there's still a lot of the same values. <laughs> and again, thank you, Miley, for this yes. song, especially. I, I remember when you sent me this, and I was like, oh my god. Like, we we watched it, like, exactly at 9 p.m., which would have been midnight your time. I'm pretty sure I sent it to you at, like, 12.30 a.m. your time. Yeah, I was like, yeah, listen to this immediately. Yep. Um, oh my god, my mom and I love this. I've listened to it probably at least once a day, whenever we're just, like, listening to music downstairs in the kitchen or whatever mm -hmm. um so yeah one of uh, i think it's arguably my my favorite song of all time now which is hard to beat out american pie so <laughs> very hard all right and then i think this is our last one um this is girls against god by florence and the machine i would have to say that this is the true fight song cancer anthem I recently heard this song for the first time, like within the last few months, and I was like, "How did I not find this sooner?" Yeah. Oh my god. Um, I think the the lyrics, it's good to be alive. It it certainly is good to be alive. Yeah. Grateful to be alive after everything has been through, and knowing so many that aren't here alive today. Um, yeah. But crying in a cereal at midnight, like I've literally had this experience of. <laughs> crying into my 
Ben and Jerry's uh, oh, strawberry cheesecake ice cream. Oof, that's so reliving dirty. my trauma and just stuck in anger, stuck in fear, stuck in sadness, stuck in grief. Um, and I, I think this is again something that is under discussed: the emotional aftermath of both things existed at the same time. Yeah, it's good to be alive, and I'm suffering. Mm-hmm. this is hard um and i think if they ever let me out i'm gonna really i'm gonna really let it out like i'm just really gonna let it out yeah uh, and then i again i listen to music from 2006 and feel kind of sick same thing with the yeah. the whole i mentioned this earlier listening to the fight song and brave and roar any any music from any period of time when i was yeah. sick going through something it is just this visceral reaction this invite light reaction that brings you right back to where you were yeah and it's like almost scary you're like am i crazy like what is going on um yeah and then oh god you're gonna get it you'll be sorry that you messed with this and i i think this is an important thing to say some people when they have a life-threatening illness like cancer they really can lean into religion Mm -hmm. and they can really rely on it but for some others I feel like it lessens your connection because you're like, if there is a God, how on earth could he or they or the gods, how could they do this to me? Yeah. Seriously. It's so twisted and cruel and evil. Uh, There's so many things in the world that are cruel and evil, not just cancer. Not just cancer. Obviously, yeah. this is within the context of cancer, but yeah. you know, that is yeah um but i think this is just a song that is like oh they get it she gets it florence and the machine she gets it she's a girly pop um but so such a beautiful unique voice as well um so is miley so many so many different you know just incredible um and again listen to the full version of this all of these songs please do all these Um, and what I hear a lot, and I grew up not religious. Um, my parents are of different religions. So they were just like, you do whatever you want. And I was like, I'm 12. You know, like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I was never really religious. Um, and uh, I am culturally Jew-ish, emphasis on the ish, but you know, you don't, it's a whole thing. Um, a lot of people will say to me, uh, God has a plan for you. <laughs> and I'll be like, what not. is this plan? <laughs> this plan is whoever's writing this story, put the pen down. This put is the messy. Pen down. This is messy. This is Temptation Island level messy, um, which is a trashy reality show. But I, it never brings comfort to me. I'm glad it brings comfort to others. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's just that it's called girls against god and it's just that we are cancer patients we are women who are just like whatever fate universe whatever you believe in or whatever you don't believe in handing this down to you you know burdening you with this disease why why would you be in support of that yep and that that's that's just my opinion and that's how i feel the song um comes across but yeah yeah and just, again like anyone like like i said earlier some people find a lot of comfort in it and for others yeah totally it's not and it's really it's important to validate both like it's yeah. okay if it doesn't give you comfort yeah um, i think that's me and i's experience um, I, I i think that there's so many beautiful aspects of religion out there that build community and you know mib has prayer agents and i don't know that that makes people feel a lot more comforted and seen and heard and um like multiple people are are manifesting good energy um for people i think that that's that that's beautiful um it's just not something that i grew up with or that i ever engaged with so um i find my community in other ways <laughs> um at least iris is my god um <laughs> <laughs> baby bridges is mine <laughs> exactly um hence the prayer candles but yeah, let's um, 
God, I love all these songs. I, I, Camille and I have been really waiting so long to get this made and ready when we were both in the right headspace, when we were both like just to give, to give this episode the love and the passion and just everything we have so we can share it with you because we think that it's really important to heal through music. So we asked you all, our listeners, our fellow MIB agents, to submit uh, what songs you feel heard from. So we have a little list. Um, I will read them out in case you're listening. Um, there's Cancer by My Chemical Romance, The Scientist by Coldplay, This Year by The Mountain Goats, Take It Day by Day by Courtney Barnett. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Write a list to, to uh, write a list of things to look forward to by Courtney Barnett. Taking Care of Things by Cave Town. Battle Belongs by Phil Wickham. Wickham, I don't know. Funeral by Phoebe Bridgers. Victoria's Secret by Jax. Great song. Silence by Khalid. Heaven Can Wait by Sia. Graceland 2 by Phoebe Bridgers. Days of Plenty from Little Women the Musical. And This Is Me Trying by Taylor Swift. All wonderful songs. I I listen to them. Beautiful, beautiful songs. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so glad you guys can find comfort in um, these songs. And um, this is a part where we really encourage you to tune into YouTube um, so you can scan for a Spotify playlist. Mm-hmm. All of these songs, you can have a nice self-care session, maybe listen to this while you're taking a bath or like yeah i don't know light a candle get some tea out um some tea because osteo is the one who made this playlist oh but <laughs> yeah and then um i guess next slide um a wonderful resource i found was um it's called the do it for love foundation and they are a great nonprofit that is a live music wish granting organization, bringing people with life learning illnesses, children with severe challenges, and wounded veterans to live concert and music events. They inspire joy, hope, and lasting powerful memories through the healing power of music. The mission of Do It for Love is to inspire hope and healing through the power of music by supporting clinical and community based music therapy, evidence based research, and providing live music experiences. So basically, like, this is a -a make-a-wish to go to concerts. That's sick. Pretty much. And um, I I checked their website. I believe they're taking applications or they're going to release applications for 2024 soon. Um, But I definitely encourage um, anyone listening to um, utilize this resource um, because going to concerts in person and hearing the music, like, like yeah. when I went to see Boy Genius, like it was a spiritual experience. Oh, for sure. Like, there's nothing beats live music. Nothing be- like listening to a recording or like it on vinyl or on Spotify. Like that's great, but actually hearing it and mm-hmm. feeling the vibrations of the music and hearing the passion of live music is so cathartic. Um, so. Yeah, completely agreed. I am so excited. Jesse and I are going to Hozier, Hosier. I I love the man. I've loved him for years. I have no idea how to pronounce his his stage name. Um, and I feel like that's really going to be a take me to church moment, if you will. Um, pun intended. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, going to Taylor Swift that was a total just mind blowing experience and very emotional and just yeah i mean the music is incredible is essentially what we're trying to say and maybe try branching out into new genres you never know what you're going to find and what you're going to feel is going to relate to you yeah so lean into the music guys is what we're trying to say yo so for all of us here at osteo we love you thank you for listening And uh, we hope you enjoy the music. Yeah. And until next time, that's That's the the tea. tea.